got to stop that. Jesus was lifting up people, lifting them up. All right, so Acts 2.38, Jesus, uh, Peter tells them, Repent and be baptized, each and every one of you, for the forgiveness of, this, of, of sins, and you too shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Reference that. People, a lot of people miss that. They're like, what do we do? We're sin. We're like, we killed the Lord. Yeah, your sins killed the Lord. What, well, what do we do? Repent and be baptized. Jesus, Peter tells them, Acts 2.38, repent. What's our response? We found out we're sinners. We're living in sin. We killed the Lord. We're not good with God right now. We're enemies of God. What do we do? Repent. Stop sinning. Repent. Turn. Go the other way. Be baptized. Act of obedience. Just like Jesus, he got baptized. Why did Jesus get baptized? It was an act of obedience to show an example of what we should do. If Jesus is going to humble himself to do that, even though he didn't have to, he wasn't a sinner. He did it as an act of obedience to his father. Who are we to not do that? Who are we to not follow his example? Everything Jesus did was an example. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh, Follow God's commands. Wake up early and pray. Everything was an example. Get baptized. So people people discount baptism, but yet Jesus did it. Why don't you do it? For the right reasons. And call out in his name. It says calling on his name. Um, Jesus is Lord. That's, you know, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Yes. Uh, man, like, do you want, it's just all in the Bible. It's all right there. Okay, Acts 2.38. Acts 8, 14, Acts 10, 47, Acts 19, 1 through 6. This is all I'm talking about. Acts. Acts, those are the references of baptism and salvation. Baptism and salvation, receiving the Holy Spirit. Oh man, I want to. All right, let me cover this because I want to read some of this stuff, but I just let me go over that. So another reference is Titus uh, chapter 3, verse 5, Philippians chapter 2, verse 7. Um, what, Philippi, what Philippians chapter 2, verse 7 is not refer, not referencing baptism, but referencing Jesus being obedient. Okay, his obedience. Philippians chapter 2, verse 7, Jesus was obedient and set the example of obedience because he humbled himself even to death on the cross. He humbled himself to being baptized. That's a humility. And that's why God said, there's my son who I'm well pleased. He got baptized. And then what is the next thing? The dove comes down like the spirit of the dove, like peace between God and you know, it's like a symbolic thing to say, oh, so that's how it works. God's going to give you the spirit when you get baptized. It's it's right there. It's so, so clear. Um, okay. Acts 19, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Read that. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 9. Read that. Romans chapter 6, verse 17. No longer slaves to sin, but set free. Why? Because we got baptized and we received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now you have power. When you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, you are now empowered. Just You have the same Spirit as Jesus once you get baptized. Once you get baptized. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a couple of these and then um, I'll let you guys go. Because I know that you guys are probably like, what is this guy going on and on about? Okay. All right. I'm going to read, I'm gonna read uh, just two scriptures. How's that? And then, Again, man, if you guys are still with me, God bless you, because it's been 40 minutes that I've been talking, and I know I could be long-winded, but I didn't know this was going to be a longer video like this. So if this is too long, let me know. Like, this is like a Bible lesson, 40-minute Bible lesson. Okay, so let me read these two scriptures to you, and then reference this video. You can always rewind and cover the scriptures that I mentioned and study those out. Uh, reference the Old Testament, salvation and baptism, what it means for yourself. And then study the New Testament, baptism, salvation, what it means, uh, what Jesus said about it, what Paul said about it, what Peter said about it. Okay, so these are just two scriptures and then I'll let you guys go. This is Romans chapter 6 and I'll just read because it's it's um, just the first few verses. Okay, so this is Paul. Okay, Romans chapter 6. It starts off, dead to sin, alive in Christ. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We, we are those who have died to sin. See, death, burial, resurrection. You've died to your sin because you got baptized. You died, you repented. You died to your sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know 
that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. So you participate in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, as it's as it referenced right there. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, into his de- like you part you die, your old self dies. In order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. That's Romans chapter 6, uh, verses 1 through 4. Just read that and or, or listen to what I said and rewind it. All right, so now, okay, that's that. Now I'm going to go over to this other uh, reference. This one will be uh, Acts and so basically what's going on here is that um, Jesus was crucified and buried in the tomb for three days, but it's freaked out people that were followers of him because they were scared. You know, they were like, oh my gosh, we're going to die too. The Romans are going to kill us. And so they they were scattered. Their Lord died. Like, what? That can't happen. The Lord died. And, you know, they freak out. They think a human terms he's a man he was killed if they do that to that guy he was doing miracles what are they going to do to me and they associate me with him i'm done i better break so a lot of the they were scattered a lot of the the christians the followers of jesus the disciples went to uh greece and so here they are in uh i think it's athens but they're 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 in uh they're in greece they they got out of dodge you know they were in galilee in jerusalem and all that and they 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 bounced, you know, they're fearful, but then they, they got, they received the Holy Spirit. They got training. Jesus came down, talked to them, said, you know, Matthew 28, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Like, don't fear. Like, I'm, I got you. Just go baptize the world. Go baptize the planet earth. You know, go baptize people, turn them into my disciples, make them obedient to my scriptures. Okay. So this is what I want to get to now that I've referenced what that's about. Jesus uh, told them to do something. So Peter now lives in, you know, Greece and then, so all these people, um, Peter is addressing the crowd, and they, they, they hear these people are, this is an international kind of area, a lot of people from all over the world, you know, they speak different languages, different tongues, they speak Aramaic, they speak Hebrew, they speak Greek, they speak Latin, they speak, you know, this is, you know, this is the first century, they speak all these different languages, um, and so they're, they're there, it's an international city for trade and, you know, business and so forth. But now here they hear the they hear Peter speaking and the other apostles, and every person there, whether they're Greek or Roman or Latin or or, or Jewish or whatever, they hear their own language. But the man who's speaking is speaking just one language, Peter. And they all hear, and they're like, How do we all hear this? How do you hear it in Japanese? And I hear it in Roman, in Latin, you hear it in Hebrew, and you hear it in Greek. But he's not speaking. You know, it's a miracle, right? Okay, so so they're all like, whoa. So now when they speak to him, he can hear them because he can understand them. The Holy Spirit, I'm telling you. So then Peter stood up with the 11. So it's Peter and the 11 other apostles. There's 12 apostles. Raised his voice. So don't, don't have a little girl's voice. Speak with power. And address the crowd. He, he spoke with, with uh, authority, kind of like, he was bold. Peter wasn't a wimp. You know, he was like, I got the Holy Spirit, man. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose, because they were thinking they're drunk because they could hear them in their own language. Everybody could hear them in their own language. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. So there's another reference to the prophets talking about the coming of the Messiah, Jesus. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke, the sun will be turned into dark to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And anyone and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, that's where Jesus was raised, was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him. As you yourselves know, this man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan. So God had a deliberate plan to hand over his own son and foreknowledge. And, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by kneeling him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it is impossible, it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope because you will not abandon me to the realm of the, of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him and, and on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah. See that? Jesus is in the same bloodline as David. He follows like that kingship. You know, Jesus is the ultimate. He's the king of kings. He was not abandoned to the death, to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it, exalted to the right hand of God. He has received, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit. So we were promised the Holy Spirit. And Jesus received that promise, the Holy Spirit, and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart because they're like, whoa, we, we killed the Messiah? We did we did this? They, these are some of the people that participated in that evil stuff that they did to Jesus. And now they realize when they hear this, the, the, the power of God that's speaking through Peter, it gets to these people, some of these people. And said to Peter and the other apostles, all of a sudden brothers, because a lot of them are Jewish. Brothers, what shall we do? Like, we did that? What should we do? What, what's our, what do we do now? We killed the Lord? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. When your sins are forgiven, you're good. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So there it is there. Repent. Step one, stop sinning. Be baptized. Get dunked in the water. But why? In the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. That's why. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So get bapt so repent, get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of my sins, and then I'll get the Holy Spirit. Yes. The, pr the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, save yourselves, save yourselves. So how do you get saved? He just told you how. Save yourselves. Get baptized. Repent. Get baptized. From this corrupt generation, those who accepted his message were baptized. So it was like, hey, he's telling the truth. I believe him. Let me get baptized. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. So 3,000 people got baptized. Okay. That's the other scripture I wanted to cover, which is that was Acts. I really basically read Acts chapter 2. Um, from Okay. Acts chapter 2, verse 23. All the way to verse 41. Acts chapter 2, verse 23 to verse 41. That's what I just read. That's where I referenced that. So that's a New Testament reference to salvation through baptism. I just read from God's word. The Apostle Peter, who the Catholics believe was the first pope. I'm not going to battle that or debate that. But Peter, Jesus' friend, apostle, blessed are you, Peter. Blessed are you, Simon. I, I should not call you Peter. 
for this for this king because he said, who do you guys say I am? Oh, some people say this about you, Lord. Some people, but what about you? What do you guys say I am? Do you guys believe I'm the, who, like, what do you guys think I am? That's Jesus talking to his friends. Who do you guys think I am? I'm hanging out with you. I'm saving people. I'm doing miracles. You guys have heard people say I'm Elijah. You guys have heard people say I'm John the Baptist. Other people said that. But what about you guys? My homeboys. What do you guys say? Peter. Nobody said anything except for Peter. You're the, you're the Messiah. You're the son of God. Blessed are you, Simon Peter, because this came from not from man, but from my Father in heaven. And I say that you are Peter, and on this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not overcome it. All right, so enough. That's my Bible lesson tonight, this morning. Specifically focusing in on biblical, biblical, biblical salvation as it's illustrated in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And how does it happen? According to God's word, Jesus, get baptized for the forgiveness of sins in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And you will receive the Holy Spirit and salvation and you're forgiven. And you are sinless at that moment. You're going to sin throughout your life. You, you sin, but you... you you live, you live for Lord, the Lord now. You pray every day. You, you read your Bible. You, you can be filled with joy because you know you are saved. That's important. Somebody who has not done that by the Bible standards is not considered saved. There's a way that God says to be saved. And then there's the way that some people will preach and teach to say saved that's not in the Bible. And I'm referencing I'm not putting any specific ministry down or talking negatively about any church but you could test for yourself from the Bible read the Bible yourself don't just rely upon what the ministers and pre preachers tell you um, some people will just say say this prayer and then you're saved and whatever that prayer is that they say I don't know what it is word for word for word but it's not in the Bible it doesn't say say this prayer and you'll be saved it says repent get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. It says it right there. You saw it. And there's other references. I, I, there's more. There's a lot more references in there. Um, for the forgiveness of your sins, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So many references as to how. Let me give you one more. If you're still with me, it's been almost an hour. There's a man who was a Pharisee. His name is Nicodemus. He was a member of the Jewish ruling council. So he was a Pharisee, like a religious leader, big time, right? He knew the Mosaic Law. All Pharisees know it verbatim. They're like scholars. It's like a PhD. <sighs> he came to Jesus at night and he said, you know, how can a man be, you know, achieve eternal life and salvation? And he said, so Jesus says, you know, I'm surprised that you coming to me and asking me, you know, about this because you're, you're Israel's teacher. You should know. You know, and he's like, well, you know that unless a man be born of uh, born again, water and spirit. He can't can't enter the kingdom of heaven. Uh, flesh gives birth to flesh, and the spirit gives birth to the spirit. Being coy, he's like he says to Jesus, "You're are you saying that a man should re-enter his mother's womb?" And, and Jesus is like, "Man, come on, man. You know, like, why are you playing with me? You know how it works. Because to be converted into Judaism, they, they get baptized. So that, that's why John was baptizing. John was a Jew." John the Baptist, he was baptizing repentance for baptism and repentance, but it was a baptism. So Jews, they knew all about what baptism was. It wasn't like the Christians invented it. Okay, baptism was around. Jews, Jews probably invented it. Um, Nicodemus was told by Jesus at night. They were having a discussion, the two of them. Jesus told them, you need to get born again. That's how you get eternal salvation that's how you get eternal life unless a man be born again he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven jesus lays that out so if jesus says it and he like i said before jesus says it, it's true and jesus says unless a man be born again born again rebirth your old self dies born of water and spirit baptism 
when a woman is born, when we're born through our, our mom, the water breaks. We're baptized out into the world. You see that? Into a new life. So, baptism is a teaching of salvation from the Bible, from God's Word. Study it out. You guys have references now. Please inbox me, leave comments. If you have any questions, hit me up. If you have anything to add, hit me up. Be respectful. Show love. We're Christians. We're, we're believers. If you're not, amen too, because it's all about love. I am not here to judge you if you're an a Islamic person or a Muslim or, or a Buddhist. I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to teach the word. I'm preaching God's word, period. Not here to cause condemnation on anyone. Jesus didn't come here to condemn. He came here to save. He saved people. He brought a sword. The word of truth, okay? So that's all I got. That's my lesson. My lesson is baptism is how we get salvation. Baptism is a commandment from God to be obedient to him in order to get saved and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You heard it right there. Read it for yourself. Study out those scriptures. And again, it's been almost an hour. All right, so let me all right, let, let me close out with a prayer. Hey, uh, God, thank you guys. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Uh, thank you for anybody who's watching me. Thank you, God, for the people who are watching, uh, who stuck around and listened to this word. Uh, thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for 2020. It was an eye opener. Uh, and I just, I'm grateful, Lord. Thank you. I pray that 2021 brings many, many, many blessings and um, repentance for many of us. And uh, thank you for sending your son, Lord uh, Jesus Christ, who is our our Lord and Savior. Thank you for the gift of your word, which teaches and preaches, and it's living and active, and it's sharper than any double-edged sword, cuts things wide open and lays bare everything. Um, thank you, God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, God. Please be with us. Fill us with your grace and your love and your in your spirit, Lord. The Holy Spirit is very powerful. Thank you for that. Thank you for giving us that power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Staff Sergeant Calhoun from Whittier. Out.